And I just hear the Lord saying that some of you feel like the enemy came to steal your voice. Some of you physically feel like the enemy's come to steal your voice. If you've had issues with your, your mouth, your vocal cords, or your breath, I want you to lift your hands. Okay, look around this room. That's a lot of hands. Okay, put your hands down. How many of you feel like the enemy's tried to cut off your voice of influence? Over this last season of time, he's tried to push you out of your job. He's tried to push you out of your position of influence. How many feel like the enemy's really been warring and contending with you this last season of time? I want us to do one more thing. Let's just give one more big shout and let's take back our voice tonight, all right? One, two, three, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We shout with a voice of praise. We shout with a voice of triumph. We shout. With a voice of praise, let God arise. Let God arise. Let God arise. Amen, amen, amen. Turn, turn to your neighbor and tell him I got my voice back. Amen. You can be seated. Um, I want to back up. Um, I want to back up for just a second. And say that in August of 2020, um, I was in, again in a time of prayer. And the Lord said three things to me that day. And I just feel like this is a very important season for what the Lord said to me then. So this was just over two years ago. How many understand sometimes we see things and then we have to watch it kind of unfold over time. Amen. That's why, we, that's why as watchmen, we need to learn how to discern the times that we're in. So in August of 2020, the three things that the Lord said to me was, number one, he said, uh, chaos is getting ready to increase. How many believe I'm a true prophet? Okay. <laughs> how many think we've seen some chaos in the nation over the last couple of years. Yes. He said that to me. He said, tell the, tell the people chaos is getting ready to increase. And I said, God, that is, not a, that is not a happy word. That is not a good word, okay? And then he said, number two, he said, but I will use chaos to strip the covering off of the corruption and the hidden backroom deals and the things that have been, the wickedness that's been being done in secret, I'm going to bring it to full exposure. Yes. Okay, so it really kind of goes together with this word about the lion roaring, especially over this region. Um, and so I knew that we were going to be up for some very interesting times. Of course, this was prior to the 2020 election and all that happened there. But then the third thing that the Lord said to me, and this was so encouraging, he said it three times. He said, tell the people of God, the God of peace is rising. He said it three times, the God of peace is rising. The God of peace is rising. And of course, this comes from Romans 16, 20, when it declares, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Amen. How many believe that God is going to crush Satan underneath our feet? Now, this kind of was a throwback to me out of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, when it talked about the different names of the Messiah. His name shall be called, say it with me, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So when I, I, I heard the Lord say that the God of peace is rising, it made me think of Prince of Peace. And so I went back and studied that out in the Hebrew. And it is in the Hebrew, it is the phrase, Sar Shalom. Prince was Sar, and of course we know the word Shalom. And so this word Sar um, is the word for prince. But it doesn't mean one who wears a crown and rides in a parade, and waves to the crowd. Okay, how many know we've seen a lot of that over the last couple days, okay? If that's not what it means at all. Listen to what Sar means in Hebrew, and you'll get a little better picture about who God is, who Jesus is. The word Sar means one who wrestles, one who wars, one who governs, and one who rules. 
Come on, the Prince of Peace is rising. One who wrestles, one who wars, one who governs, and one who rules. Understand when Romans 16, 20 says, and the God of peace, we all think, oh, the God of peace. The Prince of Peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. The God that wrestles, the God that wars, the God that governs, the God that rules, and that is partnered together with the word shalom. So let me help you with the word shalom. How many know it means peace? How many know it means wholeness, completion, prosperity, favor with God, favor with man? Isn't that an awesome meaning? But you know what? A week after the Lord spoke this to me, I was having a chat with one of my old Bible college professors, and I told him what the Lord had said to me. He said, then you'll find this interesting. He said, this week I met with a group of rabbis. He said, rabbinical scholars, and they were explaining to me the rabbinical understanding of the word shalom. So this is what they said. They said, when the Hebrew scholars look at a word, they don't just look at the word itself, but they actually look at the Hebrew characters that spell the word. And there are four Hebrew letters that spell the word, and each letter has a picture that goes with the letter. And they said, so if you look at the, the letters that spell the word shalom, the, word, the connotation that the pictures paint for you is this. Peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos. Do you understand our assignment? Peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos. How many know chaos has increased? But I'll tell you what else has increased. The authority of the ecclesia. The authority of the true church of the living God that is rising up and understanding that we are God's legislative force in the earth and that we're partnering with him and that of the increase of his government and shalom, the authority over chaos, there shall be no end. So where are we right now? We are charged by the Holy Spirit to overthrow chaos. To overthrow the corruption. To overthrow wherever it is found. Either side of the aisle. Either side. Come on. We can't protect it just because it happens to be on one side or the other. We've got to allow God to come in and expose it on either side. Because let me just tell you, there's plenty enough to go around. Is that okay? How many are coming into agreement with the word of the Lord? Amen.